Hi, I'm Marie from Marie's Scrappy Creations, where we sew the scraps of your life into beautiful creations. Join us. What we're going to be working on this week is, for lack of a better term, a hot pad. Now, some people think of a pot holder as a hot pad. For me, a hot pad is a fairly good size piece of fabric with batting and all sorts of heat resistance that I can set on my countertop and I can set a 9 by 13 pan out of the oven with a casserole in it, something like that, on top of it. And that's what we're going to go for. I wanted to start off with something that isn't difficult, easy to follow along. You learn a few techniques as we go. It won't be a, a terribly long tutorial. Uh, shouldn't take us too long to do it. Uh, if you were with us last week, I had asked everyone to sew scraps together or to get their yardage together for this week's tutorial. So what I did, because my kitchen is done in, I guess what they call primitives, uh, reds, browns, beige, things like that, I came up with this. You'll see more of that later. Uh, I took all my primitive color scraps, put them together, and made it approximately 14 by 16. Although we can trim that down, of course you could have it any size you want. You could have it larger, you could have it smaller. It's all up to you, it's your project, right? Okay, so uh, we're gonna lay out the pieces and then we're going to start sewing, so stick around. And if you hang on till the end of the video, I have a surprise to tell you about. Yay, everybody likes surprises, right? Okay, I'll see you at the cutting table. Okay, so if you remember last week, I asked you all to Sew your scraps together as I had shown you, and there's so many ways, believe me, there's no right or wrong way to do it, I'm sure it's fine. So I asked you to sew it together or get your yardage or cut your clothing apart, whatever you did to get your piece, okay? So that should measure somewhere between, like I had said, 14 by 16, but it could be 12 by 14. It can be any size that you want it to be. Now, earlier I called it a hot pad, and I do realize that some people call a pot holder a hot pad, and, and they are, but I don't know what else I'd call this. But what I have is I have my backing, which I cut about two inches larger all the way around and I've got two layers of cotton batting here. Now one layer would probably be sufficient but I figured if I was going to make it I may as well go all out and make it nice and thick. I don't want my countertop to melt or get bubbles. When we moved in this apartment there was a, a little bubble to the side. It's just on the side of our stove or on the cupboard but on the side uh that's near the stove and that little bubble bugs me so bad <laughs> but anyway so i don't i don't want to contribute to it and make any more but even above its use i think it just looks nice i mean look at all the pretty colors even if you're not into primitives like i am i mean uh, whatever color scheme you choose or just all your scraps. Scraps look beautiful all laid out. Okay, so you want your backing that's two inches larger, at least two inches larger all the way around, and one or two layers of cotton batting and your top. Now, if you were around for Wednesday's video when I did my first What's Up Wednesday video, uh, you would have seen this, which I guess I probably should have ironed. <laughs> 
anyway, um, this is basically the same thing that we're going to make tonight. It's just a different size. And as I said earlier, you can make your own size. Boy, I guess I should have ironed it. Um, it's just my backing, which I brought over to the front. And I did mitered corners, which are just 45 degree angles. And I like them to be as perfect as I can make them. But, you know, we don't always strive for perfection. Um... And this was done with two layers of cotton batting, too. And my husband has commented so many times since I made this, saying how beautiful it is. And I, and I have to say, I agree. And that's kind of the thing with scraps. We might look at one. I'm not much of one for pink, and I'm not much of one for polka dots. But there I've got pink polka dots in there. I've got some snowmen and some moose and some cowboy boots from a kid's quilt and peace signs and apples and... These, this little section here was cut off of another project that I made. I save everything. So I, I also put some strips around that I bought on Etsy. I bought a pack of strips. Now, that leads me to something I wanted to remember to tell you guys about. So what if you don't have any scraps and you want to make all these colorful things um, and you don't have anything? Look at this. This is something I made with strips, scrap strips. <laughs> and um, this is when I first started, you know, sewing with zippers and things like that. So I took all my strips and sewed them together and... I put some cute fabric on the inside, put a little handle on it. I thought it was great. Um, oh, look. One of my friends made me this on her embroidery machine. Isn't that adorable? It says, I quilt. I have it in here because I keep meaning to sew it onto here. And it was meant to be a mug rug or, you know, just kind of like a little coaster. But I think it would look perfect on my little quilted bag. Anyway, yeah. Great to have friends with good machinery and who are just as sweet as can be. Uh, anyway, so say you want strips and you want scraps like what I have or Susie Q has, but you don't have them. Well, last year I was on Etsy one day and I typed in scrap fabric just to see if, if anyone out there sold scrap fabric. And the only reason I did that, because you know, as well as I've told you many times, I have a lot of scraps. So you're probably asking yourself why I would go on to Etsy and, and search in order to buy more scraps. Well, I tend to gravitate towards darker colors such as this. And I wanted more brights. I wanted more yellows and pinks and, and lavenders and, and all those fun, bright colors. Well, I found a place, and I believe it's called my Fabric Addiction One. Either way around that, if, even if I'm getting the name wrong, I'm going to link it in the description box below. Because I tell you what, I ordered two sets of strip scrap packs. Say that three times fast. Uh, it arrived quickly. The quality was really good. And all sorts of beautiful, just gorgeous fabrics. Now, what they, how they come is in different widths, although most of them are pretty close to two and a half inches. Some are a little under, some are a little over, but most of them are like this. Only they're by width of fabric. So, you know, you're getting 42 to 44 inch strips. And she also sells them in other sizes. I believe two and a half inch, four and five inch, but don't quote me. I don't, I don't have it in front of me right now. But let's say you wanted to buy some, but you didn't know which set to buy. Personally, I think I would buy the strips because you could always cut them down into your scraps so that Maybe you want to make a placemat or you want to make one of these. This is going to go under my sewing machine, by the way. Um, maybe you just want all those scraps. Well, 
you could sew the strips together just like they are and they'd be beautiful or you can cut them down and make all, all sorts of little crumb pieces to make some quilt blocks or maybe you want to make a shopping bag or whatever so what we're going to do is i'm going to link her etsy shop in the description box so that if you want to go buy some you can find it there and what we'll do in a few weeks is i will take strips from her sets and we're going to make a few things from them i'm going to show you what you can make with these strips of scraps strips of scraps <laughs> okay so for our sewing this is what we're going to need for our tutorial hopefully you have your piece that measures approximately 14 by 16 and you're batting and as I said you can use one layer or two personally I'm using two and I'm sure that you can see that mine is a little bit larger all the way around and for anyone who doesn't know why that is it's because as we sew down through and and quilt down through this sometimes it puckers and it pulls in so all this isn't as straight so you always want to give yourself a little bit extra because we can cut it off afterwards so what we're going to do is we're going to start in the middle now I have a stitch on my sewing machine called a serpentine stitch and basically it, it's kind of like an S my most favorite stitch <laughs> uh, it hides a lot of <laughs> problems if I if I don't sew in a straight line because it's swervy so who wouldn't like that right so what you want to do is you want to sew from about here to here now you could do 45 or 60 degree angles you could free motion quilt it you could outline quilt where you stitch in the ditch around each area the only thing i caution is to start in the middle if you're going to make lines start in the middle and work your way out start here so here so on the other side go back and forth the other thing that i would tell you to do is if you start sewing and you go down this direction don't start back up here again and go in the same direction you want to turn your work because if you keep it all going in the same direction sometimes it can get a little wonky now so what happens if it comes out wonky it's fine it's fine I don't think that the pan you take out of the oven and set on it is is going to be bothered that it's a little bit wonky and if this is your first time sewing something like this you don't have to expect perfection and I'm not saying that it won't be nice of course it's going to be nice but we have to go easy on ourselves and learn things just just a little bit at a time so the next thing is is how we hold our layers together now I have some spray adhesive and I've always been a person who pins so normally I would just be going over this with my straight pins poke myself about 40 times so that I can bleed on it and not be such a happy camper but you know what I found I don't have to pin if I use the spray adhesive it's very handy I don't get a lot of fumes but then again I'm not sensitive to smells I don't have asthma or allergies so I just give it a little spray I'm gonna do one layer at a time so I am putting the, the lowest row or the the layer of cotton batting closest to the backing give it a little spritz press it down this is just sticking the cotton batting to the cotton batting and then one more time we're going to do the top layer smooth it out and one more time 
Now this brand is not the same that I had last time. And I'm, I don't want to like name the brands and this and that. I don't care for this one as much as the last one I had. It does work. It's just not as sticky. Yeah, see, it's just not. Let me see, I'm gonna get out my other basting spray and use that. And we'll see how that works. It's stuck in places, it's just not what I'm used to. Oh, maybe I just didn't let it dry long enough. Huh? Eh. Well, a little dabble do ya. Don't hurt a thing. Okay. So what we're going to do is we're going to go over to our sewing machines and we're going to start. Where? In the middle. But before we start sewing, I want to let you know that we're going to be using this edging. We're going to bring it around to the front, kind of like this. So when you start sewing, don't sew right up to the edge, okay? You want to give yourself probably at least a half an inch. Now, if you're afraid that you're going to forget and sew on that, maybe you've got a water erasable pen marker. You could just simply make a line like so. Um, yeah, if it made a mark. <laughs> I got the dry one. Okay, well, anyway, you get the idea. But really, it, it, to me, it's not hard to, to think that I'm going to stop. So what I do is I, I back stitch. I back tack usually two straight stitches. And then I serpentine stitch to the end. And I back tack a couple of stitches. Okay? So... What I am going to do, because I like everything in, in lines if I can get them. Now, I don't know if, if this line is centered here because I didn't, uh, oh, my land, it's almost center. I didn't try for that. I actually sewed a lot of scraps together, and I had this piece, too, that I, I really wanted to use it because there was some of my rooster fabric that I made an apron from probably 15 years ago now, and I, I found that fabric and I love it. But I also love this with the, with the pine cones, so I, I really wanted it to be a part of this, but it didn't make the cut. <laughs> I know, I'm punny, huh? <laughs> so I thought, you know what? Maybe I could make myself a set of pot holders out of this just cut it in half and and make some pot holders because they're the same colors as this so they would kind of match right so and the funny thing about pot holders is i make all kinds of pot holders i gift them i've been known to sell some but you ought to see what my pot holders look like i have some that were made from an old pair of curtains about 20 years ago and they have like four holes in them my granddaughter was here one day and she said, Mimi, you know, you ought to make yourself a nice set of pot holders. And so she went over to the stack of pot holders that I had made for gifts and she took a, a set out of the stack and went and put it in the drawer where I keep my pot holders. And she said, now those are yours. You, you need to use them. They're pretty. Well, after she left, I took them out of the drawer and put them back in the stack because they're too pretty to use. <laughs> so I, I really have to make myself useful. Okay, getting back to this. So I have a center line. I don't need to mark anything unless, unless you wanted to. And believe me, you do not need to mark. You can just randomly stitch this down all over to quilt it. You don't have to. But I am going to make a mark, a line, every two inches. And I'm going to use that swirly serpentine stitch every two inches when I can see it here. And because it's swirly, it really isn't going to show if I mess up. And then what I do when I uh, am done stitching this is I just take a damp cloth 
and I wipe where my marks are and it comes right off. In fact, I've been known to give gifts and forget to wipe the blue marks off. So I tell anybody who gets something from me, if there's little blue markers on there, it will come right out in the wash because I'm terribly forgetful about these things. Okay, now, as I said, you could quilt this in any direction you wanted to. You could do 45 degree angles. You could go just, well, I guess we'd start in the center and go outward kind of like a, a square swirl, but I'm gonna go with the straight lines using the serpentine stitch. So I'll meet you over at the sewing machine and you can see, I'm not going to show you every stitch I make, but enough so that you get the general idea of what I'm doing. So I'll meet you over at the sewing machine. See you there. The other thing that I probably should have mentioned is I have what's called a walking foot. I don't know if I can have you see that or not. This is a walking foot back here on my machine. Now I haven't always had one and you can do this without them. But what a walking foot does is it evenly feeds because when your sewing machine pulls your fabric through it pulls from underneath like this it just keeps pulling so on the top sometimes it doesn't match so what this walking foot does is it helps pull it from the top so that it, it more evenly feeds the top and the bottom at about the same rate uh, I went many years without one so that's how I I know that you don't have to have one you know your work can look a little bit better with one but uh it's perfectly acceptable without one so if you don't have one please don't feel that you can't do this you absolutely can okay so before i sew i always like to take something that's fairly similar to what i'm going to be sewing and test out my stitch and as you can see i've I've used this one a couple of times, but it does have two layers of batting. And I have some beige thread in here. So I'm going to try a few different stitch lengths. Let's see what we can get here. Got to have it just right. And this is my louder machine, and I apologize. This stitch is going to be perfect. Uh, speaking of sewing machines, I have a secret. I bought a new sewing machine. It came in the other day. It's been here for two days and it is still in the box. I have not opened it. Take these rattly bracelets off. Uh, I haven't opened it because I want to do an unboxing video where I show you all what came with it, what features it has, and all that jazz. And so it's been there for two days and it's just killing me that I have not opened it yet. Um, so this will be my last time on the, the Brother CS6000i for a bit because I bought a brand new Singer Quantum Stylus 9960. And it's a beautiful machine with a lot of features. Okay, here we go. I know I have my wrist pin cushion and I don't have any pins, but it's such a habit that I have to have it on. Okay, I'll get some more light here. I'm sorry if there's any glare here on my machine, but it's nighttime and I have to uh, have some light so you all can see. Okay, I'm starting in um, about a half an inch in. And I'm going to start with a back stitch, which mine just kind of sews in place. the 
center line. Okay, now remember, when you get close to the edge, you don't want to go past the edge, so you want to back up or stitch in place. And then I'm not going to cut my thread. I'm simply going to turn my work. Now remember what I said. You don't want to go in the same direction because you will run into trouble. Okay. Half inch in. And I'm about two inches over how I marked it with my marker. And a lot of people wouldn't use a back stitch here because you're when we fold the binding over, it is going to cover those stitches. So if you if you don't do it, I mean it's it's totally up to you. Totally up to you. I'm so excited that I'm actually making something kitchen. I normally, I, I don't sew for myself. I say us because it is my, my husband's kitchen, even though, uh, yeah, I make him things all the time. I sew things, but I, I generally don't sew for myself. Okay, and I'm going to go back the other way on this side. So I'm going to leave you here you know what you're doing you're going to continue just as i've been doing and when you have it all quilted to where you want it we're i'm going to show you how to do the next step which is a mitered binding by bringing the backing over to the front now if you want to do a different direction of sewing you can quilt this as much or as little as you want i well, I say as little. You're going to want three or four lines of quilting because you want it to stay together. Because if you're putting pans from the oven and you're you're placing them on it, you know it's bound to get. You know your your casserole is going to spill a little bit, or maybe your lasagna, your pasta sauce is going to leak onto it. So it's it's got to be washable. So you want to quilt it enough that it will stay together in the washer and dryer. Uh, but uh, if you wanted to quilt it the other way as well, or do free motion quilting, feel free to do that. And I'll meet you. I'm going to finish sewing mine. You finish sewing yours, and then I'm going to show you how to do the binding. Okay, have fun, and I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay, we are back. Now... I did quilt in lines going up and down and then I went in the center across and then two other lines yeah just in case you've never used the markers before the water soluble markers I'm going to try to see if if you can see that I don't know if the camera will pick it up or not but all you do there's a there's a faint blue line and you just Take a damp cloth and run it over it. I always iron everything out anyway, so it's going to dry. It would dry on its own, or the iron will dry it, whichever you'd rather do. And, of course, you can do that all at the end. You don't need to do it now. I just wanted to show you that. Okay, so now we need to trim because the quilting takes it out of shape. As I'm sure you can see here, it's... a uh, just a little bit warped, I guess. And um, I'm not going to worry about the measurement. I started off with a 14 by 16 and whatever size it ends up is, is fine. I don't have to have a certain size. Now, roll it back. Take that backing and get it out of the way. Because when you cut this, you don't want to cut the batting. You don't want that, or you don't want to cut the backing. <laughs> Excuse me, you do want to cut the batting. So I am going to use my rotary cutter and my ruler. If you do not have one, 
it's actually probably safer for you to use scissors because then you wouldn't be as likely to cut the backing. So as I said, I'm just rolling that backwards. I'm going to fold it right back. In fact, I think for my own peace of mind, I'm going to pin it in a few places to make sure that it stays back where I've put it because I don't want the nightmare of cutting into the backing at this point in the game. All right, so I am going to double check to make sure that's back there. And I'm going to cut just like that. I'll remove my pins and I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. We're going to do this on all four sides, all four edges. And it doesn't matter which side you pin it from. It might actually be easier to pin it from this side so that when you place your ruler down, if that's what you're using, um, it doesn't slide across the pins. Okay, that's out of the way. Double check again, I always get nervous. Okay, and I always visualize, I, I have to see that that's out of the way, and there it is. Remove my pins, two more sides to go. My kitty cat's nosing around here, hopefully she's a good girl, she doesn't get up where she shouldn't be. back pins so how'd you do with the quilting were you comfortable with that I know some of you watching it's old hat you do it all the time but we're also bound to have some some newbies and and that's perfect that's what we want we want people here learning all sorts of new things earlier at the beginning, I had said, if you stick around to the end, I have kind of a surprise or an announcement. I can't remember what words I used. but So I wanted to tell you that I'm going to be having a contest coming up. And in that contest, a person can win a set of pot holders. And that set of pot holders can be done in a certain color. Now, I can't guarantee that I can match your kitchen decor to a T. But if you say, oh, I like yellow or I like brown or something, I, I can do that. Some things I have, like I might have coffee or chickens or, or whatever. Uh, some things I can, but I can't guarantee. So, we are going to have a contest and I'm not exactly sure how we're going to go about it, but it is going to have something to do with comments and subscriptions. We're trying, I'm trying to get more people to subscribe to my channel and more people to share my videos. So I would be very grateful if any of you who find this video helpful, if you share it on your Facebook page, share it in a sewing group or somewhere where you are that you know other sewers are out there. Sewers? Sewers? We know who we are. Anyway, I really appreciate anyone who shares the videos. Okay, so now we have extra all the way around here, and that's good, okay? I'm going to measure two inches from the edge. Actually, let's, let's go one and a half. Let's go one and a half from the edge. Okay. And again, if you don't have a rotary cutter, that's okay. In fact, many years I went without a rotary cutter. And what I would have done in this instance, I would have marked the line at one and a half inches and then taken my scissors and just snipped it. 
same thing. You're getting you're getting the exact same thing. Okay. Here's some scraps for like those fabric postcards that you you saw a little bit of if you watched uh, last week's tutorial. At at the end, I had uh, been making fabric postcards for Valentine's Day and. Uh, I used all kinds of strips and this one might be a little narrow even for me <laughs> um, but these other ones certainly are, are usable absolutely so and as I said earlier uh, about the strap the straps the strips of fabric that you can buy on Etsy um, where I did I, oh my land I can't say enough good about those they're so colorful the fabric is good quality and i think it's going to be fun so i think we're going to do at least two if not more videos surrounding those strips in the packs and make some beautiful things we're going to make some beautiful things using those packs and if you don't want strips uh she sells them in squares as i said okay now the next part we're going to use our iron so what we're going to do is we're going to fold this just like this we're going to put this edge right up against there and we're going to take our iron and run it across there we want a nice crisp line now speaking of crisp lines I like to use sizing. It's not starch. It's similar, but it, it's lighter weight, I would guess, than starch. It. I use it a lot in my sewing. If I am making a quilt block, I always uh, use this on my fabric. Much easier to get all your points to match. Your fabric doesn't go all wonky. It just kind of keeps keeps it a little bit stiffer than what it might be on its own anyway i'm not endorsing this brand i'm just saying it's out there i'm sure there are other brands you can buy uh, i find it very helpful and i will probably give it a, a light spray when i do this just because i want it to be able to hold its shape and hold the iron and the crease but i'm going to go over to my iron and I'm going to show you as I do this, I'm going to move the camera over to the iron. But what we're going to do is we're going to just place that like that because eventually what we're going to do is this. But we're going to have some perfectly mitered corners. I'm going to show you how to have a nice, neat, neat piece. So once we get these folded over, then all we have to do is top stitch and our hot pad is done. And we'll be sitting on our kitchen counters before you know it. Okay, I'll meet you over at the iron. Okay, here we are at the ironing board. This is almost our final step. Our, when we're done sewing around the edge, we're going to be done with our beauty. Okay, so we're going to fold. As I said, we're going to take that and fold. Now, make sure your iron if you have a steam iron make sure that it's on dry you you don't want any steam on this because the steam can uh, push your fabric out of shape a little bit so you're just going to tuck that fabric right against your little hot pad right against the cotton batting get a nice crease there get it nice and hot the hotter the better See, nice crease. Okay, now mm, I have to turn it. This is what we're going to be doing, see? So I'm going to pretend that that's going to stay. <laughs> uh, so here comes a trick. Now I've seen this done on many YouTubers channels, a few websites, and I was a little skeptical, but you know, I'm a believer. <laughs> glue school glue it washes out works great doesn't gum up your needles it really doesn't so even though this says extreme for 
bigger, tougher projects. I'm just going to barely use a little bit on here. And I'm going to show you how to do this with glue and with pins because you, you can do it either way. I've, I've, I normally do it with pins, but, but this way I, I have to say it's kind of cool. So you're going to fold that over. Keep your crease. Keep tucking, tucking that under. Get that corner nice and pressed. Creases are your friend in this instance. Okay, so I'm going to, because I am a pinner, I'm going to pin like so. You can expect that I will stab myself at least once because you know, it's no fun if you don't. I think I told you in one of my first videos that um, my best friend is blind and she sews, but she won't use pins and I, I can't say as I blame her because if I couldn't see them, I stabbed myself enough being able to see them. I can't imagine not being able to see them. And another thing that you might want to use I know some people use them on this instance, and I would say that would be a good one, is clover clips. So you could also take your clover clips or whatever brand of clips you have, see, and hold them. And then you don't poke yourself. You definitely won't poke yourself with that. Okay. All right. So here we are. We've got one side folded now. What we want is a perfectly mitered corner here. So we're going to take this piece that's all crisply ironed and we're going to make a triangle. You're going to fold it right up against, right up against there. Okay, so what I do is I make my crease with my iron. I hold it there, nice hot iron. And then because I I do like the liquid glue a little bit better. I'm going to put it's down there. I guess it helps when you open it. <laughs> okay. And then heat press that right there. I'm going to fold this up. all along and I like it nice and crisp so I'm gonna go over it one more time and remember don't iron back and forth like that when you're working with fabric that that's never good it it pushes your fabric out of shape you want to press you don't want to iron Okay, so we folded this. Ow, see, I did it. We, we folded this with glue in a triangle. We folded this up to meet the edge. Look what happens when we fold that up. I'm going to pin it, and then I'll show you how perfect that is. Try not to pin myself, of course. Need a longer pin. Now, look at that nice corner, huh? You couldn't get much better than that. All right, so we're going to continue on. And we're going to do the same thing on this edge. The exact same thing. We're going to turn it. Remember how we've done that? We'll make our little triangle, iron that crease. I use a dab of glue. And the pin will hold it. You don't have to have the glue. The glue is just an extra, I guess. But you, you don't want to leave the glue without the heat of the iron. You, de you definitely don't want to do that. I guess I should pin this down as I go. 
I'm excited for this. I, I generally just don't make much for myself, as I said. I, I gift a lot of things out, and I, I love scraps, and these, these are just beautiful. That's going to look so nice on my counter, if I can stand the clutter, because I also don't like clutter. So <laughs> this isn't clutter. It's a work of art, right? We wouldn't go through all this to not use it, right? Nah, never happened. Okay, so here we've got our triangle. We're going to fold it in half just like we did before. And press across. I lift my iron, or I try to, in between. Even if it doesn't show, I'm lifting it just slightly. My fabric was already pressed, or already sprayed with the magic sizing before I put my backing on so if you want to spray it at this time if you have some or you have starch you can feel free to do that at this time it will still work at this point in time okay let's see gotta have a perfect corner here sometimes you just have to work it a little bit to get it. I just got this new ironing board cover and I thought, oh, I really like that when I when I ordered it. And now that I have it on, um, it kind of distracts me depending on the print that I'm working with. Um, but I'm used to um, a teal colored one that's underneath here that I made. Um, a friend's mom had found some huge pieces of fabric. There was like four yards of it. And I would say it would be what we would call um, deco weight fabric. Very nice, good quality cotton. And I thought, oh, I can make an ironing board cover. I don't need a tutorial because I love to take on stuff like that. And I did. I made one. And it isn't perfect, but, you know, it worked. Um, I actually made two. One turned out better than the other did. Um, but I learned. I learned. Okay, so now we're down to our last one. We've got three sides. So now you say, oh boy, what are we going to do? Well, we're going to make two triangles. We're going to make one on each edge. Okay, so first we're going to fold our triangle in. Heat it with our iron, nice crisp edge. Pop that corner. Little dabble, do ya? But this time, before we fold this, we're gonna come down here and we're gonna take care of this corner. And you want to be careful not to melt your, your pins. I guess that's where a glass head pin would come in handy. I don't have any glass head pins. Well, maybe maybe I do in my vintage tin. Because I do have a vintage tin that has all kinds of sewing accessories in there. Okay, so now we've got a triangle on both ends. And we're going to fold this last side right towards the, the cotton, just like we did the others. Nice crisp edge. I don't know where I first saw this technique, but wherever it was, I was amazed. I thought, who came up with that? Who? <laughs> because really, I... It looks so nice and to get that angle and have it be perfect that that just makes me happy doesn't take much to make me happy right nice 45 degree angle right wouldn't that make anyone happy of course it would <laughs> all right yeah, did you see how hunk and large these pins are? <laughs> these are the ones I'm used to. 
and I bought these ones and although they're probably only a quarter inch longer oh man they're larger around and and they feel like a weapon <laughs> I have to be careful with these things very careful oopsie okay mistakes happen now look at this we we'll see how that doesn't match all right but we can fix that and how we're going to fix that is instead of just meeting it here i'm gonna put it in there a little further and try it and see what happens let me see okay much better all right I guess I ought to turn it the right way to pin it. Sometimes I think we need four fingers to do this. And then you might wonder, you know, would it be better to hand sew this or machine sew this? Um, I love to hand sew. I'll just tell you that right off the bat. I do love to hand sew. I love to hand quilt. In fact, uh, one of the best quilts I ever made was one I made for my mom in the 90s. And I hand quilted the whole thing. It took me four spools of quilting thread and one winter to quilt that beautiful but I enjoyed every stitch I put into it okay so what I'm going to do is I'm going to machine stitch it if you wanted to you could use the blind stitch and you could hand stitch that personally I think I'm just going to use a decorative stitch the only thing I will say is when you get to these corners if I were you I would go up in here with a straight stitch and come back down and then continue. So I think I'm going to choose a stitch that will go back and forth here, catching both the brown edging and going into this. So I'm going to stitch around there and then I'm going to come back and show you what mine looks like completed. And... I hope you're with me so far because isn't this a beauty? I just love all these colors. I think it just is so pretty. Okay, I'm going to go stitch and I'll see you in a few minutes. Okay, I'm back and I have stitched around it and I even placed it in my kitchen. I love it. What do you think? I didn't end up using a stitch like what I said that would catch on both sides. I just used a straight stitch and went around the whole thing with that straight stitch. And I did uh, come down this way and then back and I would go down along until I got to the other edge. And then I would come down this way and then go back over the same stitches and then go up like this so I can picture leaving that there I am going to give it a good press it, it needs a little bit of a press but it I think it turned out wonderfully and I think I think it looks good placed there what do you think kind of looks kind of country I like that I appreciate each and every one of you who stayed for the tutorial I'm glad for all my new subscription. I'm glad to have you here. And my next video is going to be an unboxing because, as I said, I bought a new sewing machine. So we're going to do an unboxing. I'm not sure which day I'm going to post that. But on Wednesday, we have What's Up Wednesday. So you want to check in for that. So if you haven't already, please subscribe and click the bell so that you get a notification when I upload a new video. Thank you for joining. Take care. Bye-bye.